Welcome inside Stadium Court for the final championship Sunday of 2022. Here for the Central Florida Open and next up a women's semifinal. For the introduction of our teams, let's throw it down to Mark Sherman, courtside. That I know. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. It is time to meet uh, the next set of semifinalists. Hello, I, you know what? I thought you were there. I couldn't find you. There you are. Hi. Hi. Um, time to send another couple of teams to the finals. One on the outer course, one right here on stadium court. Let's meet this team. They have been playing so, so good. And this first young lady, she just, you just find ways to win points, Carly. You just find it when you think it's over and all of a sudden you stick a hand out, you're there. Now, look, we were, we were making bets. We're going to go Lakers or Pacers for the semifinals. But what do we got? What do we got today? Oh, we got the doors. That is a beautiful shirt collection you've got. Ladies and gentlemen, out of Indianapolis, Indiana, officially a Pacers fan. It's Carly Scott. Sorry, DJ Ruche. She said Pacers. And she's dead to you. And her partner, Go Tigers, out of Louisiana State University, looking to go to the finals for the very first time. And you're married into the Wright family for a December volleyball tournament. Middle name Charles. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Katie Lindelow Dickens making her own Christmas carol here in Florida in December. And their opponents coming through undefeated to this point and looking so, so good playing together for the first time. This first player out of LMU, ladies and gentlemen, the former Emily Day. And she's looking better than ever as Emily Capers. And her part of the first ever scholarship athlete in the amazing game of NCAA Beach Volleyball out of the University of Southern California alongside best friend and coach Eric Moranek. What's up, buddy? Let me hear it for Gina Rango. There you have it, Matt Prosser alongside Rich Lamborn for this one. Women's semifinal from Stadium Court. The one seed taking on the seventh seed. A bit of a surprise, Rich. This team, Katie Dickens and Carly Scott, making it all the way through to the semifinals here. You've seen them play a little bit throughout this weekend. What do you expect to see in the semifinal matchup? Rich is working through some technical difficulties as a Gina Urango goes with the jump serve. And there's a nice high line shot, but a net violation called against Carly Scott on the first play of the game. And it's 1-0 Capers and Urango. Gina Urango. The jump serve, something that she's worked on so much over her career. Nice blocking there by Capers up at the net. One-handed save goes over. And another net violation, this time against Dickens on the set. And it's 2-0, Capers and Urango. Dickens and Scott in their third tournament as partners, getting a third place finish earlier in the season. Another serve over to the left side. Capers with a block, but a good cover. Too strong on that over ball, sends it through the end line, and it's 3 0. Capers, Urango. And for Capers, Urango, this their first tournament as partners, but 10 combined AVP victories throughout their respective careers. Strong jump serve this time taken by Scott again, but on the right side. That set just way too tight as Emily Capers is there to the down for their fourth point of this first set, and it's 4 0. Urango off to a very good start from the end line. Back to the strong jump serve, but misses just long. Dickens and Scott are on the board. And this is Dickens with her first serve. 
taken by Capers on the left side. Strong cross court winner there by Emily Capers, formerly Emily Day, getting married a few weeks ago and going by her married last name. Five serving one. Staying on Scott, the left sider. Locked and self covered. Chance now for Dickens. And Dickens drives it through for the point as Emily Capers dropped off the net. Waiting for Rich Lamborn to get back on the call here as he's been dealing with some technical difficulties. So we'll make the first side switch. 5-2 in favor of the one seed. Capers in Urango here in Central Florida. A perfect day for volleyball. Great crowds on hand all weekend long. And Carly Scott goes with the serve over to Urango. And Gina with some good pace behind it. Puts that ball deep into the court for the point and side out. So a fast start here by the one seeds. And Urango with the jump serve, but misses. And welcome back, Rich Lamborn. Nice to have you. Been here the whole time, Matt. Been here the whole time. <laughs> so Dickens steps up to the end line, goes over to Capers. Bump set from Urango and Capers drives out one cross court. I love the new the new married uh, moniker there, Capers. Makes me think she's like a sleuth, you know. She's on some, she's on a caper. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what she can do from the inline here. Is that jump float serve goes over to Scott? But a double contact call on Katie Dickens' handset there. So Dickens yeah, and kinda... Scott had to come through the contenders bracket, Rich, and they had a bit of a test this morning in that earlier matchup to get to this semifinal. Going 18-16 in the third set against Jessica Gaffney and Savvy Simo. So we'll see if some conditioning and fitness effects linger from that one as there is Emily Capers causing some issues and scoring another point, taking us to a, be a timeout, Rich. Yeah, fitness never an issue for uh, Emily Capers. You can see she's in tremendous shape, but also Emily and Gina have the uh, advantage of having played the minimum number of matches, as you mentioned, coming into this match undefeated. Yeah, so we'll take a look out onto court one for the other women's semifinals. It's Rice and Wopat taking on Khan and Ketty. Looks like we have a first official coming down off the sand to confirm a call by our line's judge. And I make a mean margarita. I'm just saying, the margarita is unbeatable this though is pretty dang close because they make it how i make it tequila lime juice real lime juice you don't squeeze that stuff out of a bottle you something you're seeing a little more on the international do. tour is that refs will get down they off the stand it. but it's something that i've always well, loved dude. about the real, avp the is that the referees yeah, exactly. take that extra time to get down and make sure they've got those in out calls correct well, definitely at this stage of the event, it's important to make the correct call. And they certainly do take some extra time from the stand to discuss it. But back over here to Stadium Court during this timeout. Going back to Capers and Urango. Out to a six point advantage here in this opening set over Katie Dickens and Carly Scott. Capers will get us back to action here. Hey, Tough Ooh. jump serve down the line, but just misses the sideline for an error. Yeah, 
and that one just barely missing, but I think you mentioned it early, you, you know, serving a big part of the game of Capers and Urango, Gina started off with some fire from the end line, and her jump serve is one of the more formidable weapons in the game. Scott misses that serve into the net, and will make the 14-point side switch. Dickens and Scott kind of already in that position where they got to start pressing a little bit uh, in their quarterfinal match this morning. Service pressure was a big deciding factor in that match. And uh, they're going to need to find some here if they hope to get back into this one, in the semifinals versus the one seed. Well, Gina stays aggressive with her jump serve, but misses that one wide. Dickens with a five-point deficit, serves the ball over to Capers. Gina goes on two with a sneaky little left-handed shot. Well played by Gina, something that we haven't seen her do very much throughout her career. Going over on two as Capers serves again down the line to Scott. Good deflection. Capers with a swing, but Dickens gets the dig. Good rally forming here. What a block by Capers, but self-covered. Capers gets the dig, but Gina gets tripped up. And Capers can only look through the net and ask how they covered that ball. Yeah, some great awareness and some great plays from both sides throughout. Really nice awareness there from Cap Capers. Oh yeah, just too good at the end from Scott. So six serving 11. Scott with the jump float serve over to Capers from the left. Begins with the dig. And the set goes over the net and out of bounds. So a bit too aggressive on that transition set from Carly Scott. It's a fine line, Rich. Get the... You get a chance to have an opportunity to score in transition, but you give the point right back with that setting error. You as your coach, right? You're, I mean, you're coaching some of the best teams in the world. What do you say to your teams? How important is transition setting? Uh, well, I think that may be it's hard to pinpoint the most important thing, but I mean, certainly that's right up there near the top transition setting because point scoring opportunities don't necessarily come your way all the time, right? So when you get them, you really have to be good at capitalizing on them. And the teams that are most successful really convert those opportunities at a high level. And so transition setting an enormously pivotal part of that. A good look at Emily Capers' transition set. And that one way up on top of the net, but a nice dig. And a bit of a funny play goes in favor of Dickens and Scott. Yeah, there again, that set got a little bit off in transition. It's a bit of an anomaly because M. Capers is one of the better bump setters maybe in the world. She's so, so adept at that skill in particular. Uh, so look for her to be real good throughout. That one maybe just below her usual standard. Now it looked as if that handset from Urango drifted off the net a little bit, resulting in a hitting error by Emily Capers. And 13-8 advantage for the one seed takes us to our 21-point technical timeout here in set number one. So we'll go take a glance into court one. The other women's semifinal. And speaking about transition setting, that one on the money and a point going to Khan and Ketty. Good start here, three point advantage for the team closest to the camera as Megan Rice goes off the block and out of play. I think we got Ketty listed at 6-4, so she's imposing up there at the net. 
a six foot four blocker native of Missoula, Montana. Currently resides in Austin, Texas. And she sides out from the left side nicely. Nicely played her college volleyball at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo for the one and only Todd Rogers, head coach of that program up in Central California. So we come back over to Stadium Court here. Just a perfect day for Volleyball Rich here in Central Florida. Nice crowd on hand. And the four-legged furry versions joining in on the final event of the season. That's my favorite fan. The one that can't. I'm firmly in the, uh, the dogs over you? humans. <laughs> yeah, and they can't heckle. <laughs> a look at our first official as we get back to action now. Let's serve over to Urango from the right side. Now just Scott, and there's a block point for Carly Scott. Well read there. That set didn't quite get all the way out to Gina's shoulder. She kind of had to go cross court with it, and Scott puts her hands in a great position. And the float serve over to Capers now. She goes cross court for the winner, Rich. Why do you think they would score a point off of Urango and then serve the next ball back over to Emily Capers? Yeah, that's uh, that's a point I harp on a lot. I, I write that down, so to speak, as a, a service mistake. If you score on one player, you gotta keep it on that player until they show an ability to get themselves out of trouble. Well, tough serve down the middle there from Capers. Dickens cut shot gets picked up by Urango. But she misses in transition. So a few missed opportunities by Gina Urango here in the midway part of set number one. Yeah, the task for Capers Urango is to maintain focus, right? They're in a pretty comfortable lead, but they can't let off the accelerator because Scott and Dickens have shown a, a propensity to come back. We saw it in the quarterfinal, we saw it yesterday in their matches. They're dangerous if you let them hang around. Well, good response there from Gina Urango again attacking from the right side to score the point. And at this stage of the event, Rich, Urango Capers, the one seed. I mean, this is their event to lose now. They're playing the seventh seed, the other semifinal has the sixth and 12th seeded teams facing off one another. So if you're looking at tournament seedings, it's heavily favored for Capers and Urango. That's why we play the game, as they say. You know, if it, if it was on paper, you'd be 100% correct. Nice little cover there. Self coverage by Carly Scott. Gina goes for the back set on the left side, and that doesn't clear the net. So another attack error leads to us to the 15-12 scoreboard here in set number one. Yeah, Gina just coming in a little too softly, in my opinion. She's got to stay aggressive, give herself that good physical approach. <laughs> Again, no Matt. How do you serve the other person when you've scored a few in succession on Urango? Yeah, that's a questionable strategy indeed, Rich. They've done it twice now, so you definitely can't mark that up as a service you know, error, per se, going after the wrong player. They clearly seem to be challenging Emily Capers after Urango makes a hitting error, but it's 16-12 after the side switch. Back to that four-point advantage. Capers with the serve. Aggressive swing by Scott there down the line. A yeah, really nice swing. Yeah, it's, certainly it's not a service error per se, but it is what I would call a game management error, right? And little things have big consequences, especially as you get deep into the tournament. We're in the semifinals here, so you got to really be on top of every little aspect of the game. Scott responds with a service error into the net. 
ill-timed for that service error. And Urango with the jump serve. Over to Scott. Catches the net, but it also catches the sideline and it's called inbounds for the point. Interesting, that looked way out from my vantage point, but obviously our, our view may be a little bit obscured. Our broadcast booth on the far side of that sideline. As another surf goes over to Urango from the right, Dickens runs it down. Oh, nice dig from Gina over though, but Scott comes right back and attacks the overpass for the point. Now just a two point deficit. Yeah, that looked questionable as that play developed right to try and hit that overpass, but Scott found the perfect location. Put that away. And Urango Capers decide to call their timeout, feeling the pressure here from the seven seated pair of Dickens and Scott here in set number one. Let's take it out to court one for a glance. Starting out set number one, sorry, set number two. It's a service ace as Wopat and Rice dropped the first set to Khan and Ketty. So the 12 seed looking to pull off a monumental upset here on court number one. Your guy the wrong Rice and charging through this tournament, huh? 12 seed, making it all the way to the semifinal. Good response there from the right sider. As we go back to stadium court here to Close out number one. Started out all Urango, Cape, Dickens, and Scott have settled in, found their rhythm, put some pressure on the one seed, and now we're just down by two points. Dickens over on one, but Gina's there. Second chance. Gets touch on the block, and they'll take the point. Yeah, that's something we see a lot out of Dickens and Scott. We've already seen it a few times here in this first set. The over on one plays. They like to slap it over and try and surprise their opponents. Uh, but Urango and Capers up to the task on that one. Short serve taken by Scott on two by Dickens. Urango runs it down though. And misses the opportunity in transition. Another hitting error there going against Urango and Capers. Yeah, Gina just struggling to find her range a little bit. Uh, it has eluded her kind of through the middle of this set, latter parts of this set. Uh, but I'm sure she will recover it here relatively soon. So back to that two point deficit with another serve going over to Gina. So the back set, she goes down the line. You heard Capers give her partner a good call and it pays off in the point and a side switch. Gina going with the left hand that time. Yeah. Gotta be good with both hands. So 19 serving 16 now, the business end of set number one, a two point advantage, three point advantage, two points away. But we're gonna get some clarification on that one as there seems to be some confusion on whether that caught the line. I do believe the ball is long. That's really dangerous of me to say right now before the official call. The official, official, official call is it's out of bounds long. And after the review, it is confirmed out of bounds. So a service error brings us to 17 serving 19. Yeah, 
Pino from the right side after that good set. Good dig by Dickens. And Dickens drives that one through the middle for the point. And Dickens a pretty physical defender. She digs the ball and she digs a lot of them. She's pretty terminal in transition. So 18 serving 19 now. Tight pass. Papers has to go up, but Scott blocks it down, and we're tied at 19 all. Turn of events this is, Matt. A 6 1 start in favor of Capers Urango. But Scott and Dickens didn't give up. They fought all the way back. We're tied at 19 all. And we have ourselves a bit of a battle here. And they serve over to Capers. And she gets the side out to fall. 2019 now, Capers Urango serving at set point. Not, not to be the broken record I'm about to be, Matt, but the bulk of your points coming against Urango and, and you let the team of Capers Urango off the hook repeatedly by serving M Capers. It just seems like not the best strategy to me. Lot though comes right back with the aggressive cross court attack. We're tied at 20s and we're going to go into overtime. Scott with a physical, aggressive swing that time to score the point. And they go back to Gina now from the right. Down the line, Dickens gets the dig. Chance for 21. Papers had to go over. Scott plays it. Well played off the net. Over on one right back to Gina. Dickens get the dig. We'll play on now. Over on one from Gina. Out of the reach. What a rally by all four athletes right there. I get tired just watching that day, <laughs> Rich. Sorry, but it's 21-20 now for Capers Urango. Yeah, big bullet dodge too by Urango and Capers. Kind of midway through that, there was an overall one attempt. Dickens and Scott, that was a little bit ill-advised as it went right to Gina Urango. Uh, but otherwise, some amazing defensive efforts from all four athletes out there. No timeouts remaining for either one of these teams, so they're gonna have to gather themselves here. It's now set point again for Capers and Uringo once Gina's done cleaning off those sunglasses. Urango opts for the jump float serve and goes into the net. So a big sigh of relief for Dickens is Scott as that service error brings us to 21 all and a side change. Yeah, pretty critical time for a service mistake. You know, we oftentimes talk about how not all errors are created equal and the timing of that one makes it extra rough. Now Capers opting to play the ball over on two and scoring off of Scott's block, trying to take a little pressure off of her partner and it worked that time. Yeah, love the aggressive mindset there from Capers. So another opportunity now for set point. And another service error rich to your displeasure. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, you, you never want to have successive service errors at any time, but certainly not back to back with set point in hand. Let's see what Gina does from the right here. Good swing, but it's dug tight set to Dickens and she can't deal with it. Gets blocked by the net. 
And a bullet is dodged that time by Capers Urengo. I would say this is a comedy of errors right now, although neither side finding it very funny. Nope, just you and I, Rich, as it's set point again for Urango. Let's see if she can make this serve in. Put the pressure on the opponents here. Goes to the jump serve. Dickens with a good pass. And Dickens with a strong cut shot to keep set number one going. Yeah, really nice set there. Good aggressive approach and slap down from Dickens. 23 all now in set number one. Overtime volleyball. Dickens with the float serve. Taken by Gina through the middle. Set off the net, but Scott doesn't get that block where she wanted it as the ball drops on her side. And 24 23 now to the one seed. Yeah, that's a good aggressive swing on a set that's drifting just a little bit off the net by Rango that time. All right. Another set point opportunity for Capers and Urango. Emily serves over to Scott. Tight set, good deflection. Gina runs it down. Deep corner shot, another opportunity for Scott. Gina in the pocket gets the dig. Oh, they escape with it, Rich, after that long extended rally to take set number one. 25-23 in favor of Emily Capers and Gina Urango. Now the players are going to take an extended break. Rich and I are going to take a break. Come back for more action for set two right after this commercial break. Radio gym shorts that you have from college, they're done. Get them out of here. It's time to upgrade your short game with the one from Fabletics, man. We love them. Your girlfriend will be stealing these. They're the best. This fabric fixes another major issue, fit. It's got this crazy stretch to it that looks so cute when I do my yoga or errands or like literally anything. They're the most comfortable, best feeling, luxe-tastic fabric that we have ever worn. I'm Carrie Walsh Jennings. I've played with lots of injuries and sore muscles. KT Tape has helped me push past the pain. Today, clinical studies prove what I've always known, that using KT Tape before, during, and after workouts can reduce muscle soreness. Whether it's the Olympics or the local gym, pain is pain. Tape up with KT Tape, the number one kinesiology tape. Use it for muscle soreness and many common injuries. KT Tape, train longer, finish stronger. KT Tape works for me, it'll work for you. Dear Mainland, aloha. My brother and I hear lots of you have discovered a real Hawaiian favorite, Big Wave Golden Ale. That's the good kind stuff, yeah, bro. Maybe it's the island flavor that makes each sip taste like a little vacation. Got your beers here. That's a whole lot of little vacations right there, huh, brother? That's like a big vacation. Retire. One life, right? Mahalo. Big Wave Golden Ale from Kona Brewing. And welcome back to Stadium Court here for the final AVP Pro Series event of 2022, the Central Florida Open. Women's semifinal action going on here between Capers, Urango, Dick, and Scott. Matt Prosser alongside Rich Lamborn in the broadcast booth as we get a glance at our stats here, Rich. Overtime volleyball in set number one. Anything stand out to you there? 
yes, I've seen Dickens and Scott play a couple matches over the weekend, and they've been above a 500 hitting percentage in all of those. So that's kind of a surprisingly low number for them for both teams, quite frankly. And uh, yeah, both sides need to minimize the errors. Obviously, we saw Capers and Urango firmly in control until the midway point of that set. So it'll be interesting to see how both teams respond here. Yeah, it certainly will as Gina's first serve of set number two goes out through the end line. So Katie Dickens steps up to the end line, goes over to Durango, but Capers on two, scores the point with the option. We saw Capers utilize the option play a little bit more as set number one progressed. Looks as if they're going to continue to utilize that strategy here. As we get a glance at Scott now from the left side, Gina with a dig. She goes cross court for the winner. So a nice dig and score by Gina Urango. Now that's kind of what we're accustomed to seeing from the one seed there, right? Great dig, Gina, great set from Emily and the put away. Picture in picture there is a quick glance over to court number one. The other semifinal between Megan Rice, Carly Wopat, and Carly Khan, Jennifer Ketty. Women's final will take place later this afternoon here from Central Florida. Scott gets the side out and ties it up at two points apiece. And court one just finished with Khan and Keedy, the sixth seed, getting a two set sweep victory over Megan Rice and Carly Wopat. So they've punched their ticket to the finals. And they'll get to watch. These two teams battle it out here on stadium court to see who they'll face off with later today. The sixth seed looking to see whether they'll play the one or seventh seeded teams here in Central Florida as Urango serving now with a 3-2 advantage. And she's missed both of her serves here to start set number two. It's always that ongoing battle you're facing, right? You want to apply pressure from the end line, but you have to mitigate errors to a certain extent. Yeah, she comes right back with a good side out from the right side. Credit to her partner for that bump set. But it's 4-3 in favor of the one seed as we make our first side switch. 21-15, 21-15 out on court number one. Jen Petty and Carly Khan are in. Good glance over there during the side switch. You see the coach for Capers and Urango, Eric Baranek, getting a few extra words in with Gina. Emily Capers now. Steers over to Scott. Funnel and dig by Gina. Dickens comes right back with a dig. Now her chance from the right side. And Carly Dickens gets the point over the block and down to tie us up at four. Yeah, Capers and Rango don't get that point, but you wonder if that's one of those plays that's going to pay dividends as this match progresses because just a great touch on a really good shot, quite frankly, from Scott. Uh, but Urango and, and Capers able to get a swing at it at least. That starts to weigh on you psychologically, right? If everything you swing at is getting touched. Well, that service error past the sideline brings us to 5-4. Urango getting ready to jump serve now. Keeps it in play. Scott with an easy pass, though. Nice side out there by Scott and Dickens. Smooth over the top that time from Scott. Dina from the right side challenges Scott, gets the deflection, but Dickens can't run it down. 
Good aggressive swing that time, Rich, by Gina Uringo. Agreed, yeah. More often than not, when you stay aggressive like that, good things happen. You know, Scott's in position to block that, but because of the aggression, because of the pace, it rattles her hands and goes down for the kill. Aper steps up to the end line. Good hybrid serve over to Scott. Handled well, blocked back but covered. Second chance on the counterattack scores by Scott. So they're doing a good job of extending rallies and getting several looks and opportunities to score. Yeah, good patience on the side of Dickens and Scott that time. Six serving six. They go over to Capers this time. Tight set. Pokey shot gets dug up by Dickens. And Dickens misses outside the antenna. Nice set, Gina. A bit unfortunate that Don't time, Rich, that making the... <laughs> Attack air, go cleanly past the blocker, but not allowed to go outside the antenna. So hitting air is, Urango comes right back with a strong jump serve, but the side out is earned by Dickens. Let's get a replay here. All right, so this is the replay from a few points ago. It did make contact with the antenna there, as you see by our camera crew. Good job in the production truck showing us that slow-mo, but Emily Capers arguing the fact that Emily Scott interfered with Emily Capers' block jump. And Rich, I know you didn't do a lot of blocking in your beach career. I did. This is a little bit tricky when a player comes under the net looking for perhaps an interference call. Begging the referees, it's a judgment call and it'll stay for Dickens and Scott. Yeah, on that replay there, it didn't look like there was there was interference. I, I know what Emily was arguing, right? It, she had to be kind of aware of Scott coming under the net a little bit, but the play moved away from her so it looked like there was no interference but you know that's just sort of my assessment i guess and that's why you're here good insight by <laughs> you rich so <laughs> gina comes right back though with the left-handed attack it's the second time she has utilized the left-handed swing that's why I'm here to opine no matter how frequently I'm wrong. <laughs> so we're tied at eights now with the one seed serving. Emily Capers misses that one to the corner. Yeah, those errors creeping up a little too high for, for my liking considering they're not telling too many aces. Capers on two, doesn't clear the net, so that's an attack error, and now a two-point advantage for Dickens and Scott. And just like that, 10 service errors, Rich, in favor of Urengo and Capers. That's not the category you want to be winning. No, that's that's a lot for halfway through the second set. And the lead grows now 11-8 for Dickens as Scott as Dickens hits the counterattack down the line into the open court. And right now the one seed feeling some pressure. They decide to call their timeout here early in set number two, down by three points. Yeah, and, and theoretically, anyways, when you have that level of service mistakes, you start to be frustrated, no doubt, right? You start to feel a little bit of, 
pressure, whether it's self-imposed or otherwise, that you have to start pressing in other areas, right? Because you've missed so many serves and giving your opponent so many freebies. And so I think we're kind of seeing the fallout of that here on the side of Capers and Urango, that they're giving up a few points on the back of some of those service errors, and that has uh, Scott that Dickens in the lead right now. Well, and it's a bit of a tense situation as the one seed playing in your first tournament together as a pair. You're in the semifinals. You know you're expected to make it to the championship match, if not win the event as the one seed. And they're getting tested right now. So a bit of adversity on that side as well. Yeah, and that's one thing that's been consistent in the game of Scott Dickens is their grit faced a huge deficit in the first set here in this match, grinded all the way back and pushed it to overtime, just barely losing a tight one. Uh, we've seen that in prior previous matches from them as well. Just always hanging around, always hanging around. And more often than not, taking advantages of opportunities that they have. And there's a rundown of the top eight seeds when this event started. Obviously, the names in yellow have been eliminated. Names in white still playing. Obviously, the winner of this match will move on to the finals later today to take on the six-seeded team of Carly Khan and Jennifer Ketty. So still some work to be done here by both teams. Scott goes down the line to Urango. Scoop there by Dickens, it goes over. Capers takes it. And Capers drives that one cross court for the winner. Again, Scott and Dickens doing a good job to pick their opponents. Have to go second and third time sometimes to get their side out, so. Scott with a great shot high off of Capers is block and out of play. So it's 12-9 now in favor of Scott and Dickens into the technical timeout here in set number two. And the one seed kind of up against it now, Rich. They've started this match really out of the gate strongly, but they've since faded and have gotten pressure from Scott and Dickens as this match has progressed. You know, maybe if you're Coach Baranek there, you remind them they were up 13-8 at the technical at the first set, and uh, Dickens and Scott grinded all the way back. So certainly not out of reach here if you're Capers and Urango. Plenty of set left. And realistically, even though Dickens and Scott are in the lead, you know their backs are against the wall uh, as they have to win this set to push it to a third. So Capers and Urango, you know, it's, you, you gotta be able to trick yourselves mentally sometimes, right? Nothing to lose here. Let's go out, play our game, and trust that we can get right back into this second set. Well, spoken like a true sports psychologist, Rich, sometimes <laughs> as a coach, that's what you have to be. As we get a little rerun of the 2022 women's champions, you see Jeannie Urango's name right, up there. So two names will be added to that list by the end of the day here on Championship Sunday from Central Florida. As we get back to action now, 12 serving nine. Serve goes over to Capers. Gina with the cover. Her attack goes around the block and down for the point. A really good cover, really good aggressive swing and transition there from Gina. Another one of those plays that don't really get represented on the scoreboard or the statistics, Rich, is the cover, much like that transition set, but often the knot leads to point scoring opportunities. Scott gets a little fortuitous bounce off the net, scores the point. 
little love from the equipment. This time they serve Urango. Capers on two, misses that one. Dickens is there. Oh, what a cut shot there from Carly Dickens. 14-10, Dickens Scott. Apologies, Katie yeah, Dickens about, with a cut shot. Talked about how physical she is in transition, but showing some great touch as well on that one. So a four-point advantage now to the seven seed. Trying to force a third set tiebreaker. Urango, though, comes through aggressively and hits that one off of Dickens and up into the crowd. So down by three, playing catch up here in set number two. Urango goes aggressive with the jump serve, but it's brought back. Now a free ball. Tight set, Urango can't get around Scott and talk about a missed opportunity, Rich. Yeah, very much so. And again, kind of to your earlier point about transition setting, right? That set gets a little bit tight right into the jaws of Scott and she cleans it up, save the point for her team. Tricky serve over to the sideline. Gina goes hard off the block, controlled. Free ball back to Capers now. And Capers puts that one nicely down the line. Keeping the deficit to only three points now. Scott really does a nice job at the net with her vision. Sees when a softer shot is coming and kind of delays her jump a little bit. She touches a lot of balls up there, it seems like. Capers goes through the middle. Scott, roll shot. Nice dig, though, out of the net from Gina. Oh, hang and swat. Good cover, though. And Capers. Aggressively swings cross court for a big point for her side. Yeah, a huge point there. Again, a good look at the vision on the block of Carly Scott, but couldn't quite find the open sand with it. Well, Urango and Capers now. Need to find some magic, score some points here in the second half of set number two. They find themselves down by two points. Tough serve over to Scott from the left. Talk about an aggressive swing. That time by Carly Scott. Yeah, needs to keep enough of those in there to keep the defense honest to set up her line shots, right? 16 serving 13, still working on Urango. Her high line shot finds the corner. Well placed by Gina there. Let's see if Urango can get Scott and Capers Sorry, Scott and Dickens in some trouble here now with her serve. Good jump serve down the middle. Taken by Dickens. And she misses. So they pulled to within one now after that hitting error. Yeah, and that's a nice look at, at how you should bounce the ball back and forth between the players, right? Scott's been siding out nicely, so Gina goes at Dickens this time. but she follows it up with a service error through the inline. Unfortunate timing for that one, and the lead goes back to two points, 17-15 now in favor of Dickens and Scott. Float serve to Gina, goes for the back set. And she finds the open space for the point.
within striking distance here are Capers and Urango. They gotta be tough with their serving, but they've gotta make their serves <laughs> here. Critical piece. Cross court service got now from the left. She comes right back with a great high line shot over the block and down. Eighteen sixteen now, just three points away from winning set number two and forcing that third set tiebreaker. Capers with a good aggressive swing. We'll Scoring the 17th point, nine, taking us to the side switch. 17, yeah, good stuff happens two. when you stay aggressive, as we see there, right? Emily stays aggressive, even though the block and the defender kind of seem to be right on that angle shot. Because of the pace, it rattles the hands of the blocker and kind of puts the defender in an awkward position. Turns into a point for Emily and Gina. So Gina will serve now. Down by one. Goes with the jump serve over to Dickens. From the right side, there's a dig. Set goes over the net from Capers and Scott is waiting for it. Can we talk about this being, you know, pretty late in the year for an AVP tournament? You know, you wonder if the players have taken a little bit of time off coming into this, right? Because some of the contacts are less than crisp, certainly less crisp than we're used to seeing. That is a big block point right there for Carly Scott and Katie Dickens getting Urango and Capers a bit out of system. Brings them to set point here in set number two. Dickens goes over to Capers. Urango has to run it down the overset, and Scott there again to clean it up. And we're going to go three. Scott and Dickens take set number two, 21 17. And this women's semifinal is going to go the distance between the one and seven seed here for the right to move on to the women's championship. It's the choices we make that define us. Try and Trevor is coming off a tough, heartbreaking loss. And ultimately, the enemy is within. Some people want it. Some wish for it. But others make it happen. Try and Trevor is super lethal, bringing fire and passion to the court. How will you take charge? I'm Carrie Walsh Jennings. I've played with lots of injuries and sore muscles. KT Tape has helped me push past the pain. Today, clinical studies prove what I've always known, that using KT Tape before, during, and after workouts can reduce muscle soreness. Whether it's the Olympics or the local gym, pain is pain. Tape up with KT Tape, the number one kinesiology tape. Use it for muscle soreness and many common injuries. KT Tape, train longer, finish stronger. KT Tape works for me, it'll work for you. Stadium Court, Matt Prosser alongside Rich Lamborn, and we're going to go the distance here. Set number three coming up, but first, a glance at our statistics from set number two. Hitting percentage is much higher, Rich. Controlled blocks in favor of Dickens and Scott. Anything jump out of the page here for you in set number two? Well, I mean, that's almost a 500 point turnaround for Dickens and Scott, and that's kind of what we've been accustomed to seeing from them throughout the weekend. So, they found their form 
And it looks like they're starting off with that same form here in the third. Yeah, speaking of form, the blocking form of Carly Scott is on fire right now, finishing out set number two with quite a few, and just a dream start there for set number three. And she's really been good at the net. Uh, Gina responds nicely with a good aggressive cross court winner from the right side. As it always seems to, Matt, it's gonna come down to execution and who can minimize errors on their side in this third set, I would think. Dickens to the middle places that line shot nicely down to the corner. Well, for capers in Uringo, they're definitely gonna to have to somehow mitigate their service errors that have plagued them throughout this match without giving up any aggressiveness from the inline as Scott goes with a jump serve into the net. Yeah, if you're at the double digits before you get to the third set in the, in the service error category, you're, you're way too high. Emily Capers now from the inline. Goes over to Dickens right in the lap as she attacks on the right side nicely. For the point. Yeah, nice rhythm on this play. You see the good aggressive approach. And I love that kind of 60% swing. It's not a shot, it's not a hit necessarily, just kind of a slap down. So effective though. So a 3 2 advantage on the first side switch. Katie Dickens goes with the serve down the line at Capers. Picked up over on one right to Gina Urango. Her chance now to counterattack. And it's a winner down the line. Yeah, that's something they utilize a lot, Dickens and Scott, that over on one. But sometimes the timing of it is a bit suspect. So three to three in set number three. Urango with the jump serve over to Dickens. And the creative shot that time gets past Urango's defense to score the point. Yeah, creativity, a great way to describe that match. Tight set goes jumbo over Gina in the backcourt. Scott ready to serve now. Gina passes, goes for the back set, but from well off the net, somehow gets the ball past the block and down for the point, just out of reach of Dickens' defense. So four to four, early action in set number three with a trip to the finals on the line here between these two teams. Go, go, go. Dickens from the right side. Great footwork right there. Comes into the court and then works her way back out to attack that ball over the block and down. Yeah, Dickens and Scott both in a pretty nice offensive rhythm right now. So it's gonna kind of be a who blinks first type of a situation in this third set, it would seem. No Scramble play there, picked up by Dickens. Nice drop dig by Emily Capers. Scott gets a chance now. Another self cover from Scott. Urango with a chance deflected. And Dickens can't get that one, so the point will go to Capers Urango. Yeah, a couple big plays from M. Capers there. She had a great pull dig to keep that play alive for her team, and then a good swat, really nice set there as well. So three quality contacts from M. Capers to get the job done on her side. So on the 5-5 five -five side switch, 
here in set number three. No surprise here. We've got a battle on our hands, Rich. No surprise. Opting for the jump float serve now. Over to Scott on the left side. And what a cut shot there by Carly Scott. Yeah, that's such a good shot when the blocker's pulling because the instinct is to go after the retreating blocker, right? But very rarely is the defense expecting that sharp cut shot. Scott with the jump float serve. Passed well by Urango. Good set there, Dickens. Got a hand on the ball, but can't reel it in. So Capers, Urango looking for a couple points on their serve here. Let's see if Capers can get something happening. Serve goes right over to Dickens. Urango dives for it, but can't get that dig. And it's a side out to Dickens and Scott. Yeah, they were able to induce the less than perfect pass with the serve there, but Matt Dickens came up with a great shot to get themselves out of trouble. So a one point advantage here. Seven serving six. Serve goes over to Capers. Set up nicely by Gina, and that's the cut shot we've seen Emily Capers do throughout her entire career, Rich. Yeah, that's a patented shot there. So as Urango goes with a jump serve, Scott with a good one, pass. One, one. Emily Capers, nice drop one. dig. Here's a chance for her now. But Scott shuts it down for another block point. Eight seven halfway through set number three. We're as close as we can be. Eight yeah. to seven. Great pull dig and a great bit of strategy awesome. from Capers and Urango, but. Scott goes up and gets the stuff to redeem yeah, herself for the soft line shot. Get there for the first time. Eight to seven here in the third. Oh, the blocking of Carly Scott has come alive throughout this match as it's gone on. Just as it did earlier today in their quarterfinal matchup that went 18-16 into set number three. So Capers here with a strong left side attack off of Dickens and up into the crowd. Capers serving at 88 goes to the short serve in front of Scott. Nice dig by Urango. Chance now for Gina. Kept alive. Second chance for Urango on two this time, and it works. Yeah, started with a great defensive play down the line from Urango. Great dig. Well, you like to see the option play, not something that Capers and Urango have employed very much throughout this match. But perhaps they might want to consider utilizing it a little bit more here, catching their opponent perhaps off guard a little bit. Yeah, especially in transition there when they kind of have control of the ball. It's a good way to pick up the tempo, not let your opponents recover defensively. Carly Scott has been on point with her self covers and second chance opportunities off the block and then attacking that ball on one for the point.
Dickens steps up and misses that standing float serve just long. A little too strong, and now Urango and Capers reach double digits. Only five points away from taking this match. Those five points could feel like an eternity, though. Strong jump serve over. Passed well by Scott to the left side. Capers lines up nicely, but Scott gets it through the block and down, and we're tied at 10 points apiece now. What has happened in the other, let's see, what do we got? 106 points in this match. I care about the next five to ten. First to five wins this one and gets into the finals. So ten to ten after the side switch. Carly Scott serving over two capers. Right. Dug up over on one, right to Urango. She goes for the back set in transition and hammers that one down the line for the point. Big opportunity there for Capers and Urango, and Gina capitalizes on it. And that's that good aggressive mode from Gina. So now 11 serving 10. Capers will serve. Goes short over to Scott. Line the line. From the left, nice yeah. set from Dickens. And she misses just long. So two quick points for the one seed now. 12 to 10. Harley Scott, Katie Dickens decided to call their one and only timeout here upset number three. Yeah, we kind of talked about uh, this match might come down to who blinks first, and that would be considered a, at least a mini blink right there. Huh, oh, Matt? Definitely a blink. Two-point advantage here, but we've seen throughout this match, a two-point advantage doesn't mean very much. As these two teams have battled this entire match so far, for the right to play the winner there in the final, the sixth seed, Khan and Ketty. Later this afternoon, 3 p.m. local time. Right after the men's finals, which will be next here on Stadium Court. Taylor Crabb, one of your players, Rich, partnering up with Phil Dalhauser, taking on Triborn and John Hyden for the men's championship. Yeah, and we saw a good one out of them yesterday right so we look for, for another repeat john hyden looking to establish himself as the oldest champion on the avp tour he already holds that position but looking to add to it as a 50 year old so back to it now caper serving with that two-point advantage Go short to Dickens for his service ace. What a time for that one, Rich. Yeah, and, and I like that there because that's that's pressure with not a ton of risk, right? She's not going, you know, trying to hit the three-foot line with that serve. She's just going short to make Dickens move a little bit, and it kind of catches her off guard. She gets rewarded for a great serve from M. Capers. So a three-point advantage, their biggest lead of this third set. Just two points away from taking it now. Capers again goes to the short serve, this time passed by Scott. And another hitting error, Rich. This one again out through the end line. Eight points now for your point. What a run here by the one seed. Showing their experience. Capers with the jump surf. Over to Scott. From off the net. Good wherewithal and vision to go with the cut shot, Rich. Yeah, a little bit surprising on that one that uh, M didn't drop off the net. That's set pretty far off the net, but with the four-point lead, maybe they were just 
feeling comfortable. A couple opportunities to side out for a spot in the finals now for M. Capers, Gina Urango. Now you set it one side out away from advancing to the finals. Three chances to do so. Dickens serves over to Urango. Gina from the right, blocked but covered. Capers on two, it's controlled. Scott with an open net, finds the court for a point. First match point saved now. As has been the case with this entire match, just when we think we know what's going to happen, not so fast. So match point opportunity number two now. Dickens with the float serve over to Urango again. She stays through the middle this time. And that's an aggressive swing by Gina Urango to take the win, 15-12 in set number three. What a battle between these two teams, but it's the one seed that prevails, getting tested. Capers and Urango moving on, Rich. Yeah, getting tested huge, right? All the way up until 10-10 in that third set, and then they really showed their class, induced a few errors from their opponents and earned themselves a spot in the final. So there's a glance at the updated bracket. Finals coming up later this afternoon. Emily Capers, Gina Urango taking on the six-seeded team of Carly Kahn and Jennifer Ketty for the title of Central Florida Open Champions. For my broadcast partner, Rich Lamborn on Matt Prosser, thanks for joining us here. Come back for more action on Championship Sunday.